We're about two minutes away from the end of the trading day on this Fed day. Scarlett Fu and Alex Steele here with you, counting you down to the closing bell, and here to help us take you beyond the bell with the global simulcast, Carol Master and Tim Stenovic. Welcome to everyone across Bloomberg Television, Radio, and YouTube. Carol, were you confused by what Jay Powell said? <laughs> and, and there are various forecasts where they did not move the dots in terms of how many rate cuts there'll be this year? I'm a little bit confused. I'm also a little bit confused at this market reaction because they bumped up growth estimates, good, but they also bumped up a little bit, right? Inflation expectations for this year. And I just, uh, just you know, here we are, what, a record on the S&P 500 again. Um, it does feel like, all right, maybe the Fed is doing really well at this soft landing, but it's just, yeah, I have a lot of questions and I feel like I, I don't quite get it all. But they were honest. ever, they were ever so close to moving the number of the median number of cuts this year, Alex. I mean, they were ever so close to moving that from three to two. And that's what participants noted in the summary of economic projections. So I think we have to keep that in mind that, OK, expectations for rate cuts from the, the Fed members actually went down a little bit for the year. Yeah, exactly. And also, if you look at, say, the overall rate, the end rate, right, 2.6 percent, yeah, okay, it got up 10 basis points, but it is higher. And that just feeds that narrative of what is neutral, is neutral hmm. higher, right. and that higher for longer, which, again, makes the equity rally a little perplexing, Scar. Well, it's hard to forecast out what's going to happen in 2026 when no one knows what's going to happen in two months' time in 2024. Yeah. As Mike McKee was reminding us, uh, for the dots, it's not a collective forecast. It's a collection of individual forecasts. So it's just what individual Fed policymakers hey, were Scarlett, thinking at the time. at some point. At some point. At some point. Oh, yes. Thank you. <laughs> at some point this year. All right. There, there are the closing bells. We did it. We got through Fed Day. Uh, volume relatively okay, holding up a little bit here. And it is definitely green on the screen. You're looking at a record for the S&P, a record for the equal weighted index. NASDAQ 100 up over 1%. Really big moves on solid volume, Carol. Yeah, pretty impressive, right? Like, who'd have thunk in terms of uh, this Fed meeting and, and what we got. But uh, there you have it, folks. If I look at the S&P 500, guys, most names in the index actually gaining ground today. 377 uh, to the upside, 123 losing ground. Scarlet, three unchanged. And that is reflected in the sectors as well. You look at the IMAP, a lot of green on that screen, 11 sectors, two of them in the red, healthcare and energy, the rest in the green. In fact, you've got five groups uh, gaining at least 1%. Consumer discretionary, communication services, financials, industrials, and tech. All right, guys, let me get to some of the individual gainers. Uh, Chipotle Mexican Grill Man, uh, definitely on my list. At its highs today, up 8%, finishing the day with about a 3.5% gain uh, among some of the biggest movers to the upside in the S&P 500. I do believe that is at a record high close. Uh, company proposed a 50, 50 to 1 stock split to broaden the uh, company's investor base after a 13,000 percent run up in the stock since its IPO. The split would be the first in the company's 30-year history when public back in January of 2006 at $22 a share. The stock is now $2,895 a share. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of some big news. Um, also, to a name that was among that's the still more expensive than a burrito. <laughs> it is. is it a share of Chipotle. You can buy several burritos. Yeah, even if you did, I buy 50 right now. It's still <laughs> more expensive than a burrito. Yeah, exactly. Okay. All right. Good to know. Sorry. Uh, hey, one of the uh, biggest gainers in the uh, NASDAQ 100 today, ticker is TTD uh, Tree Desk. Uh, $40 billion mark cap advertising technology company. I don't talk about it a lot, but thank you, Disney. Uh, they said it would sell ads through Google and the Trade Desk, and so that got that stock popping uh, in today's session up about 4.5%. We do have some earnings, though. We do. Micron, the chip maker, has come out with results, and it's a little bit, it feels a little bit off-cycle given most of tech has reported, but we can tell you that second quarter adjusted EPS was $0.42 cents a share. The consensus estimate seems to have been a loss of $0.24, cents. so I don't know if we're comparing like with comparable. like. Yeah, so we'll get back to you on that one, but adjusted revenue for the quarter quarter, $5.82 billion. That looks like it's higher than expected. Uh, analysts were looking for somewhere in the neighborhood of $5.35 billion. Cash flow, of course, critical to investors this earnings season. Second quarter cash flow from operations, $1.22 billion. Ooh, analysts were looking for $2.14 billion. Adjusted operating income, $204 million. Analysts were looking for a loss of $238.4 million. So if those numbers are comparable, certainly a beat on the adjusted operating income and EPS line. Maybe that's why the stock is up, uh, at least on first blush. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, you know, I think also the idea is that some analysts like Morgan Stanley were saying maybe the stock has just run a little bit too far. Uh, the stock's a little bit ahead of their sales with the overall price momentum maybe slowing in the back half. Uh, a forecast as well for this qu quarter. Third quarter adjusted revenue of $6.4 billion to $6.8 billion. That's a good one. Analysts were looking for just under $6 billion. So that explains that uh, big move in after hours trading.
Yeah. Okay. So adjusted revenue, uh, $5.8 billion, up 58% year over year, coming above estimates of $5.35 billion. Shares right now uh, up 9.8%. Third quarter adjusted revenue, 6.4 to 6.8 billion. Uh, and there's the estimate beat right there at 5.99 billion. So like you said, Scar, uh, investors happy about this. Shares up 10%. Yeah. Also, one more thing. Uh, Margins. Adjusted margins, wow. yeah, for the third quarter, 25 to 28 percent, and the consensus estimate was just under 21 percent. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah, pretty remarkable, right, in terms of uh, what we continue to see from a lot of players in the chips, chip sector. I mean, you've got the Sox uh, certainly, what, up about 14, 15 percent so far this year, mm -hmm. so you continue to see a lot of momentum uh, among those individual players. Hey, guys, I got one more gainer as we continue to watch uh, Micron up about 11, 12 percent here in the aftermarket. Um, top Golf Callaway. Uh, ticker is MODG. Uh, this one certainly caught my attention, rallying uh, up about almost 9% here in today's session. Uh, the Chosun Daily um, said a South Korean strategic investor is, quote, in the running to acquire the company. Uh, the major shareholders will reportedly spin off Top Golf, uh, a subsidiary of Top Golf Callaway brands, and sell only Callaway Golf, according to this report. Raymond James weighing in, telling clients not to put too much credits in a deal, but investors said, hey, this sounds interesting. And so again, the stock up almost 9% today session. Okay, let's get to uh, some of the decliners, which are actually tough to find on a day like today <laughs> when so many stocks moved higher. I do you want to go with Supermicrocomputer down for a third day in a row, 1.6% to the downside today, bringing its three-day decline to about 16%. We talked yesterday about the back and forth with the share sale that was announced yesterday before the bell. Now the company is guiding potential investors in a sale of those 2 million shares to a price of $875 each. So that's lower than the range that was reported yesterday. Uh, that's according to people familiar with the matter. And then Equinix, uh, the uh, data center read, falling as much as 5.7% earlier in the session, down 2.3%. This after Hindenburg came out and said it's short. Uh, Hindenburg Research is alleging that the company manipulates its accounting and is selling an AI pipe dream. That's a quote from Hindenburg <laughs> Research. Uh, we should note that a media representative for Equinix did not respond to a request for comment from Bloomberg News. And Signet Jewelers, this one is super interesting. Did you guys see this news today? Uh, down 12% on the day. It was down as uh, much as 16% earlier in the session, the most going all the way back to June of 2020. It turns out people aren't getting engaged at the rate that they used to. Huh. So Signet owns- Are they living in sin instead? Is that <laughs> I what's don't going know on? what they're doing. Okay. They own K, Zales, Jared, Blue Nile, and more. Um, they is issued a disappointing first quarter sales forecast. They blamed fewer than expected engagements in the US. The company does expect in US, they call this US engagement incidents in the first quarter to be down. That's Doesn't the least that, romantic wow. I was just going to say, that's, yeah, had an incident over the weekend. I got engaged. Um, <laughs> down low to mid-single digits compared to the year-ago quarter. Or, or people one. just don't want to spend a boatload of money on a ring. That's Maybe the that's thing. Agreed. You can yeah. do something else. You do can you, get a ring from a cereal box. Yeah, um, get, get a ring, but you don't have to get a yeah. bazillion dollar ring. Go on a fun vacation instead. Although I keep seeing people. I just had a niece who got married, and her engagement ring was really nice. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Well. There's that. Okay, okay, let's go to yields for a second, guys, because there's things that are happening on the front end. You've got a lot of buying coming in. Yields down by about seven basis points on the two-year. But as you go farther out, you're starting to see a little bit of selling. The idea that, okay, sure, you want to take the dovish point of view in the short end, but longer term, higher for longer, means maybe you're going to get that steepener that we've kind of uh, all been waiting for. Yeah, I think it's kind of fascinating to see the moves um, and, you know, just how much um, kind of expectations about where we see kind of yields here in the U.S., what, what's the higher re, uh, ra uh, range, if you will. Katie Kaminsky, who we just talked with at Alpha Simplex, you go back to last summer and she was talking about a 6% on the um, 10-year, not necessarily saying that, but didn't necessarily rule out 5%. So it's, you know, interesting to see where ultimately things kind of settle in. What is truly the upper range when it comes to uh, the Treasury range? I was we're talking occur. with Alex earlier about how Capital One and Amex are still offering high yield savings accounts with 4.35% APY. Once the Fed does begin cutting rates at some point, um, how quickly do those rates change as mm -hmm. well? We know that they were slow to, to raise rates, uh, even as the Federal Reserve was hiking. But as soon as there's a mention of a rate cut, does that just get slashed right away? Hey, guys, I just want to go back to Micron for a second because it's up as much as 13 percent at this point. So as Scarlett pointed out before, that third quarter uh, revenue outlook and earnings outlook and margin outlook are all uh, beating estimates. And even their gross margin for this quarter that they just reported was 20 percent. I mean, they're 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 definitely working it. And uh, and some of the analysts were a little worried that their stock was already overextended and pricing would be an issue. And it appears that them, that might not be the case. Get ready for that to be one of my gainers tomorrow. I can already tell. You. All right, guys, that's a wrap. Our cross-platform coverage, radio, TV, YouTube, Bloomberg Originals. We call it Beyond the Bell. We will see you again, same time, same place, tomorrow.